Hi, I'm Kevin from TechSoup. In this video, we will talk about repairing mobile devices. I'll discuss some pros and cons, my bench and tool setup, and some actual repair footage. I've never done this before, so if you're like me and want to know the basics, this video is for you. So let's get started. Every nonprofit or library probably has an old broken device. Mobile devices are especially easy to break as we use them everywhere we go. You generally have three options. One, you can recycle it as e-waste. Do a quick online search for e-waste recyclers in your area so hazardous materials don't enter the waste stream. A second option is to resell it or trade in for a new one. The value you get would depend on factors like how much damage it has or the buying party. Lastly, you can repair it. You can do it yourself or pay someone else to. Either way, this is the most environmentally friendly option. If it's a relatively new phone, you can use it for apps or email. And if it's an older device, you can use it for just texting and voice calling. If you do decide to fix it yourself, you need to do some basic research ahead of time. iFixit is a great place to start because they have repair guides for almost all phones, and they are free. You can also purchase tools and parts directly from them to support their free content, which is always a good idea. I also watched detailed step-by-step -step videos on YouTube on how professionals repaired it and noted any potential issues. If your phone is a popular model, you'll find many videos to give you a good idea of what you need to do. After completing my research, I went ahead and ordered parts from either Amazon.com or eBay. There are also specialized retailers like sellerparts.com or tmart.com that will carry your parts. Prices generally don't fluctuate a lot, so beware of unusually low prices or sellers with poor reviews. The following is an inventory of the parts and their prices. The screen and digitizer for $50. The pry tool, which is $5. What's called a Torx screwdriver, which is part of a toolkit for $30. A Phillips screwdriver, which is part of the toolkit. Double-sided tape, which came with tweezers for $5. A heat gun, which I use a hair dryer for. Last but not least, goggles, which are very important as we shall see later. Just like repairing PCs, I use a large white surface so if a screw bounces off, I'm more likely to see where it landed. I also use a tray to keep those screws in place, and in order, I unscrewed them. When you order replacement parts, you usually get some free tools like these, but I would avoid using them. The ones from iFixit are made from quality materials and will give you better leverage. Along with the prying tool, tweezers, and the double-sided tape, I'm ready to begin. My old phone was broken here in the upper left corner. We'll eventually pry it off from the chassis so we can replace it. You generally start from the back of the phone and work your way through several layers. I use the hair dryer on the sides and later near the battery to soften any glue that helped keep everything in place. By now, I have fully disassembled my phone. This is the part to which the screen is attached. It took quite a bit of time to separate the two pieces. As for the old screen, you notice that I had to crack it even more during the process of separation. Be extra careful in this step, as you may cut yourself with these small pieces of the glass like I did. To attach the new screen, I applied double-sided tape on the applicable surface areas, making sure it's even on all sides. I've now reconnected the middle section, the battery, and other wiring. Once again, making sure everything is fitting snugly on all edges. With the case screw back on, I plugged the charger in and the indicator light comes on. And most importantly, the screen display comes on too. When it gets fully charged, I'll turn it on to make sure the screen register my touches as well. The entire repair process took about an hour and a half, mostly because I'm new to it and I was being extra careful taking apart the phone. I now have a functional second phone as a backup or lend to a friend if I need to. You may need to purchase a SIM card adapter as I did since the sizes were different. Overall, I felt that it was not too difficult, and if you have any experience fixing PCs, I would definitely give it a try. If you have any questions or comments, let us know in the comments section, and if there are other topics you want us to cover, let us know as well. Thanks for watching.